So, welcome everybody to my presentation slash workshop um, about what you do when you're new, improving video review. My name is Christoph, or my common nickname is Fisch. I work for With Media Germany, so you find me on um, Garrett or Fabricator under WND-Fisch. Um, I work for Wikimedia Germany been a few years now and mainly um, as a developer in the course of certain technical wishes. So we have this German technical wishes where we address several wishes the German community, speak, speaking community has, but that also affects the international communities and in most cases we cooperate tightly also with the contact team from the foundation and do things for everybody. So, if you know the revision slider or the two column conflict edit view, maybe you saw it as a beta feature already. That's a uh, thing that I mainly worked on. Um, now, to the start, what are we doing here and why are we doing it? So, the main idea is um, that I will present you as, I assume, newcomers, but also maybe experienced developers. Uh, with a video of um, ideas how to find smaller simple things to do in the media group um, using code style checks or so code analysis tools and fabricated tasks. So why am I doing it? So because um, I want you to get like insights into the media review core code and you should get used to the processes around reviews, git review, using git. Um, I want you to be able to get things done that are not too complicated so you can get motivated and satisfied um, because especially for a beginner it can be a really hard learning curve so there's a lot of stuff going on in the media wiki code and all its extensions so it can get quite complicated and I want to give you ideas uh, for simple things you can start working on and getting better and better on it. So, you don't need to be a good hacker, you don't need to have all the knowledge about the code and you don't have to have all the time to dig deep into it. So we are starting with simple things and moving our way a bit up. Um, yeah, I want to give you something to do and you can always help, you know, even if it's simple things and they may seem uh, very easy and every help is appreciated really because um, also the experienced developers do not have the time to do everything. Um, so, what is this presentation not? Um, I will not talk about how to use Git or set up your Garrett account and use Git review. There are really good tutorials for it and help pages. They are all linked in the presentation. I will share it in the ticket later. Um, I will not talk about how to use or install Composer or Node.js and NPM. Because these are kind of requisites, so but as I said, you can look at the presentation later and click all the links, and you will find help for that. So, I will also not talk about how to get a Fabricator account, a Garrett account, or get your local media wiki installation running. There is a part of the newcomers later this that day at 4 pm in the volume where you can get help on that. So, go there if you need to start there. Um, we start with really, really tiny things, the code style. Um, MediaWiki has coding conventions, so conventions how we want to have our code written so it's easily readable and that it's like common style used in all MediaWiki projects. And we also have Linda set how to check these rules. So for CSS we have Stylin that can be installed with NPM and it's run with Scrunch. We have ESLint for JavaScript code, also run uh, with run and installed by NPM. And then we have the PHP code snapper that is installed and run with Composer to check code styles in PHP. Um, I will, yeah, so the idea to find issues there is, so normally we have these auto checks and normally they all pass on the code, so the code in theory should be clean. But um, in some cases, we disable checks, especially you will see it later in the PHP code snipper because you know the code evolved, and then at some point we decided on having coding styles that way or that way, and um, big 
part of the code do not match these coding styles yet, and no one took the time to look at it and fix things there. So um, that's where you can find issues. And in general, you do it like that. So uh, you look for checks that are disabled, we enable them, run the tests, and then you will see the issues, and then you can fix them. And that will help. To start with styling, so honestly, there's really not much going on with open style issues because they can be, in, in most cases, they can be fixed automatically and that was done already. But in theory, you can install styles with npm run, so go to your core dictionary of MediaWiki, run an npm update and it will install all things necessary for the style checks and then you can run them with run style. Um, there's a config file where all the rules are in. It's the styling RC file. You, you will find it also in the root directory. And um, the rules that are in place by um, Wikimedia that are uh, in a Git repository where everything is configured. So this local styling RC file extends these rules. Um, when you look at this local file, you won't find any disabled rules, but sometimes uh, we disable rules in place in the code. So if you search for style and disable in the code, you might find places where rules were disabled and then you might find things to do. But for style and no, maybe not. But moving on, we have ESLint for JavaScript. It's similar, so you can install it also with npm update and then run grunt to run the tests. You will recognize the same, the same schema kind of. So you have um, the rules file, in that case it's eoslint.rc. Um, in both cases also for silent it's a JSON file. Um, the rules file extends existing rules from the Wikimedia um, environment. So these are the basic rules, and also it's not really common that you have find disabled rules in that file because also the JavaScript code seems to be pretty clean. But still, you have the chance to pick um, things with uh, looking in the code directly, and there the keyword to, to look for is the ESLint dash disabled thing. So you might find people like that in the code. So. Way more interesting is the PHP code snippet. Um, because we have a lot of PHP code mm -hmm. and it's partly pretty old. Um, and the schema here is similar, but you use Composer. So with Composer update, you install all the requisites to run the checks. And then with Composer PHP CS, you run the code style checks on the whole code base. Since the PHP codebase is quite big, um, you can run it, and uh, for me, on a quite quick machine, it takes around two minutes to run them for all the files. Um, if you have a slower machine and also low SD card, you can also just pick certain paths or just check some files. You can do that with the PHP CS checks. So if you don't want to wait all the time, always when you check it, um, just pick a dictionary there, a directory, I mean, and look at it and say, yeah, what's up in there? And for the code sniffer, um, it's not called rules, it's called sniffs. So you also have a config file um, that inherits all the rules that should be in place also from a general rule set. But when you look at this um, XML file in core, you will find a lot of disabled rules. And these disabled sniffs or rules, um, they all begin with the exclude name and then you have the name of the rule. So when you look at that file in your core uh, directory, you will find a lot of disabled rules because there seem to be problems in several places of the code where these rules cannot be applied. But this is something we don't want. So, um, some easy things are, for example, we with things like uh, it's a function common with the missing parameter name, so or um, it's some common that's uh, that's in line and that shouldn't be the case. So um, you can just play it around with the 
things, just disable the sniffs, run the, che the checks and see what comes up, and maybe you find something in the case. Um, there's also the option to give um, to uh, disable rules in code, so in line. So this would be let keyword then to look for. Um, but you already have a lot, lot of things you can find when you just disable the rules in the main config and run the tests and see what, what, what comes up. So that's <laughs> for code style. But the next level, let's have some fun. Is the PHP fun? Is a um, static code analysis tool, the PHP. We um, use it in core like for a few months now, so it's pretty pretty new. But it does things that go beyond style. So um, it checks for for common issues in the code, um, for example, deprecated functions, but also um, wrong or missing documentation, wrong wrong or missing typings, stuff like that. Um, there's a small description how to um, install and use Farm with the media pick code. It's, uh, the link is in the document. And uh, there's also an issue on Fabricator, though, that's like the epic general Farm issue. So if you fix things found by Farm, uh, you could just add that ticket ID to the patch, but uh, later more to that. Um, yeah, with fun it's a bit different, so there's also um, a config file where everything's configured, where fun should look for things and stuff, and there you have an array with suppressed issue types. So, um, looking at that array, you could also uh, disable um, rules in there and then run fun. So, it's again the same idea, you have the rules that are disabled, the issue types that are suppressed, you just uh, re-enable them um, by uncommitting the disabled rule, run farm, and then you will have output on your console, but it looks weird because it's not really ordered. Better you look at this file, this will be generated when you run farm. So there you will find uh, the output of the latest run of farm. Um, and then you can see all the issues. I can later on give examples so, so you have an idea how that looks like. How that works. Um, yeah. Some easy issues you can find with farm is also stuff like the signature does not match. Um, um, yeah, so the parameter is nullable, but it's not in the documentation. So these are issues that can be fixed by. Um, fixing the PHP doc. So we try to use our PHP doc is used widely in our, our yeah many places around the world, but not not everywhere. And sometimes it's wrong. So um, the parameters change, but the PHP doc was not adjusted um, and stuff like that. And uh, it's really good when this gets improved because PHP doc helps also the the IDE so that you get correct um, auto completion and stuff like that. So um, these should be simple issues and there's a lot of these. Um, maybe easy but could also be complicated with stuff like deprecated functions. So um, once in a while um, there's a function of the code that we will replace with another one or with a, another thing or whatever and the old function gets deprecated. Um, but will still be used in many places. So um, there is often the case that uh, functions used that it was marked as deprecated because it was replaced by another function or another thing. And these things can also be found with farm. Um, the fixes for these problems can be sometimes very easy. So sometimes it's just okay. They use that function, it's deprecated. Now they use this function, okay, I just replace the function. Um, but sometimes it can be tricky. So, always when you look at these issues, if you have the feeling, okay, I don't know what to do here, uh, it seems way more complicated, just grab the next one. So, with Palm, you will find several things. Um, and as a hint on what to do with this deprecated function, 
just look at the code in the WKit function. So what do they do now in that function? Or look also at the documentation of the WKit function. Maybe if they, uh, there's, a, there's a documentation, there's a line where it's written in, okay, you should now use this, so do this instead of that. Um, just a bit how to deal with it, the things. Um, okay. So now coming to the next level, kind of. Mm. If you feel more confident, and let's say you have done how many things and want to move on, get a fabricator task. <laughs> um, on fabricator, we have tasks with special tags. Um, one is the easy tag, and as the name says, it should be an easy task. I say should be because <laughs> easy is, yeah, you know, it depends. But um, so you can look for, for these tags. Um, this link in the document is clickable, so there you will move directly to the um, to the page of the easy tag, and there in the left there's a point where you see open tasks. Um, also, we have the tag need vo needs volunteer. Um, that could be also an easy task. Sometimes you have post tags on a task, but it could also be that it's a more complicated task. Just look into it and see what it says, and um, you can work on it. Um, just before you grab a task, see if it's unassigned. So uh, most tasks are maybe already assigned to someone, so then that in general means someone's working on it. Um, and when you found something, so what do you do? So let's say you found a style issue or you found a fun error you fixed or you found a task you worked on. Um, I have here a rough workflow on what's going on from there. So if it's a fabricated task, claim the task that's the first thing you should do so no one else is working parallel on the task. Um, then of course fix the issue, depending on what to do there. Then commit a patch and push it to bear it, get reviews. Sometimes you get comments on your patches, so you have to improve something. Address these comments, comments fix the new issues, and wait until you get your plus two. So that's a rough thing. More in detail, before you commit anything, you should yourself run the cold start checks again. So maybe you broke something, or maybe if you introduce something new. Um, you did something that's not in the code style, so run the, che the checks yourself locally and you will see, okay, everything's fine, um, now I can commit and now I can push it. Um, for committing and pushing patches to Garrett, I also have the link here um, to a small condensed tutorial how to do that. And if you have a task from Fabricator, don't forget to add the task number to this um, commit message because this will um, help because it then a mechanism will start that automatically links the task to your patch and in your patch the link to the task is clickable and it helps a lot to find oh what is the context of that patch or to also for reviewers to see oh for that task there's a patch up now. Um, you can the common way to do this is with like having this bar column and then number but I kind of realized that if you put any um, task number into the commit message field starting with a T will be recognized. <laughs> yeah, the next step when you have committed everything is you need to get reviews, of course, and maybe you also need to help. Um, add people to the patch or ping, ping people in the, in the task. Um, the people you have to add or they have to ping yeah, it depends. Um, when you have a when you have a task um, from Fabricator, usually, usually you have like a project patch. So let's say it's, for example, the project revision slider that would be that would be a project. Usually you can click this task and you can get a list of members that are attached to the project. So this is like one hint on who to poke or who to ping or who to add as a reviewer. Um, there's also a bigger uh, tutorial about how to get reviews uh, on MediaWiki. You can click the link later and see there. And also you can always ask in IRC. And um, as stated today, we will have also like 
on Wednesday is this new IRC help hour where you can understand, you can come in and say and ask questions or ask for reviews and stuff like that. Um, when you get reviews, address the comment, comments there, update your patches so they are fine and shiny and reviewers are satisfied. And then hopefully, get a plus two. Hold on. Yeah, question. Uh, when you said add or ping people, yes. does that mean that you can add people to review your patches and get it? Yes. In Garrett, you, you can, there's a, there's a place that says reviews and there's a button app. And they can type in a name, it has also an auto completion. And they can add people um, to review the patch. Adding people there does not necessarily mean that they really will look at your patch in the next hour or something. Um, because it depends on how, how people deal with their messages. Um, if they get a manual essay, you react on that. So, but it's it's like a starting point. Add them to the patch. Um, if nothing happens, ping them on Fabricator. If nothing happens, go on OIC and write them directly. So, to get to get the attention. But um, usually, when you when you do like these small things, um, usually someone is looking on Master what's happening there, and when he sees. A tiny patch then it can be the luck in two or three days if it gets much for many because it's, it seems to be cool and looks good and that could be quite quick. And also um, depending on the project there might be people that get added as auto reviewers. So if you upload a patch for pro project revision lighter for example, I would be added as auto reviewer, so I automatically get a hint. Oh there's a new patch up. Similar to other projects. Uh, yeah. Questions. <laughs> so if not, my plan now is um, you have time to try things out if you would like to. I could come to your place. I could tell people with, with stuff. Um, you could always contact me on IRC. Um, also, if you do not find issues in core, we have a lot of extensions running and there might be issues in these extensions. Um, when you look at the, so when you want to add the idea on what extensions are relevant, when you look at the wiki, that's a special page, special common version, and they can see a list of extensions that's installed. So, um, uh, yeah, there are many extensions in place. That, uh, Needs to be maintained as well, so uh, you can also have a look, look there. And then, always useful is this big help page How to Become a Media Wiki Hacker. There, you find also all the links, nearly all the links I had in my presentation to get you on board with doing the stuff for Media Wiki. Is this slide available online? I will after this presentation.